Alright guys, it is 5.30 a.m. And we are about to start on 24 hour bathroom challenge, so. I gotta get up and get excited, cause this is gonna be fun. Bathroom is totally a blank slate. Got it all cleared out, ready to go. By the end of the day, it's gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna go get some food in me cause we got a good, good base. And then we're gonna go make a run for supplies, paint, all that good stuff. Now, we're ready to go to the store. All right, already one delay. This freaking Pepsi truck stopped and blocked me in the Indio Alley. There you go. Don't you know, we got a YouTube challenge, dude. Come on. All right. I think this is the earliest I've ever been to Home Depot, honestly. So we gotta be efficient here. We gotta get a vanity, a mirror. We gotta get, uh, what else do we need? What do we need? I can't even think right now. Well, we'll figure it out when we get inside. Over here is where supposedly the vanities are and... <laughs> oh God, okay. Making improvements. I hope they aren't improving this by not having this. Uh, okay, first hurdle. Gotta find where the vanities are now, if they're still here. Many, many minutes later. Disaster averted. It looks like they've got a new aisle for the vanities. So now we just gotta figure out which one we want. We're going for modern. I like the drawers. I'm not sure, I don't know. I'm not sure about like that granite top. I honestly, also 500 bucks. Okay, too much. 260 bucks over here, but oh, four models busted. That's never a good sign. That may be going too cheap. We gotta have something in the middle. Ooh, I like these. All right, what do we think? Kinda like this one, 350 bucks. I think this is gonna be the winner here. And we need a bigger cart. You're gonna need a bigger boat. It was actually kind of hard to find one of these big carts right now. I gotta shout out all the hardworking folks in the trades because they are all up early. And that's why none of these big carts were apparently available, but we got one. Two, three, lift with the legs. All right. Boom. All right, mirrors, we're gonna keep it kind of simple. 24 by 30. Oh, of course they're out of that. Okay, 30 by 30, that's too big. 24 by 30, wait, what's this? Polished frameless bathroom mirror. Okay. Next up, we are gonna try to paint today, which is gonna be one of the biggest challenges. I don't wanna just do paint though. I wanna add some, some paneling or something, maybe to make it interesting. I was looking online and saw these pre-primed shiplap panels. These are gonna be perfect to panel the lower half of the room. We can just cut them to size, glue them on. And I'm thinking painting these matte black will elevate the look and make it more modern instead of like the farmhouse look that you typically associate with shiplap. I think that'll, I think that'll do. Let's go. Time to pick out the hardware. I do not like chrome, so that is out. I'm thinking, honestly, I like this matte black stuff here, but I think we're gonna do matte black paint on that shiplap panel to give it a more of a modern edge. And because of that, I think the matte black hardware will get lost against it. I think we wanna do brushed nickels. The simpler the better, this or this. This is probably the most simple and modern, I think. Yeah, okay. Let's go with this one. This doesn't feel like it has a faucet in it. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a floor display. Oh, there we go. All right, man, hey, I appreciate it. Thank you. Toilet paper holder, check. Towel arm, check. Those are essentials. And you know what? I'm just realizing as we're going around there, all the, like, the little details, the finishing details, putting in the towel rack, putting in the TP holder, installing those, it's just gonna add up time-wise and kind of makes getting this thing finished in 24 hours, well, it's a challenge. Man, we've got a lot of toilets to choose from. We're trying to keep this bathroom under a budget, so I don't see any reason to go with the expensive brands of toilets. Honestly, I've used the less expensive ones and they've been fine. The one thing I do like though, I do like the, the dual flush. Gotta, gotta save a little water where we can. And ooh, this one jumps out. Quick connect, under 10 minutes. Double flush, check, and it has a soft close seat. I think we have a winner here. Uh, busted up box, but you know what? Hey, we're gonna roll the dice a little bit. So like, hold on, hold on. I gotta th think the decision. The power flush, apparently this one will flush seven pool balls down the toilet. Think of all the stuff we could put down the toilet. If we could do seven pool balls, sky is the limit. <laughs> so I'm thinking instead of traditional sort of wood trim a chair rail across the top of the paneling, we're gonna use 
some Sluder tile trim. You just set this right on top of the panels to create your sort of chair rail, nice finished edge at the top. I've actually never seen it done anywhere else before on top of paneling like that. So you guys are gonna have to stay tuned to find out if it's a great idea or terrible and there's a reason that no one's done it. But now we gotta go check out and get over to the paint store. I am in the Benjamin Moore store who also happens to be the sponsor of this video. We're gonna talk about them more later, but now we gotta pick out a color. I'm thinking either like a matte black or a matte gray. I talked to the folks over at Benjamin Moore and they said for a bathroom, you wanna go with their Aura Bath and Spa, which is apparently a awesome paint. Here we go, in a matte finish. Color richness formulated for high humidity interiors. I like the sound of that. So now, uh, colors. I like this one, hold on. Is the winner actually gonna be Black Panther? 60% of the time, it works every time. One gallon of Black Panther, one gallon of Chantilly lace for the white top, and that's what I have in the rest of the place. It is 8 a.m. and we have got all the supplies we need, I think. So let's get home and start building. So this is the space we got. It is about a five by five powder room or half bathroom, whatever you wanna call it. Basically, it's just gonna have a simple vanity and a toilet, but it is going to be a challenge to get everything in from the flooring to all the panels on the wall to the paint, paint drying, assembling the vanity, installing the vanity, installing the heart. We got a work cut out for us today. So first up, we got to install the flooring and tile. Not really time to do that in 24 hours with the grout and everything. Take advantage of the fact this is a powder room so you don't need it to be as waterproof as a full bath where you have a tub and shower. We're just gonna go with the hardwood flooring, same hardwood flooring we use for the hallway. I had a bunch left over, so it's an efficient use of materials, save a little money, all those good things. First step for that is gonna be laying down the foam underlayment. So we got our transition piece laid out right here and we're gonna run the floorboards perpendicular to that in the bathroom. I got the first piece laid out just so we have a nice straight reference. If you don't get your first row straight, you end up fighting that straightness the whole time as you add more rows on. And for the first row, cause you can't get this big flooring nailer in there, I just use a brad nailer to hold it down. So far I did that for the flooring in the rest of the house and it's uh, almost a year old now and haven't had any issues, had all four seasons. So we're just gonna go with that technique for this one. Got last piece going in. Does it fit? Uh -huh, maybe. Yes, yes, there we go. All right, sweet. It is now 11.42 and the floor is in. That is one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle. We're doing all right. We are just under a quarter of the way through the day. I think we're okay. Barring in any uh, unforeseen circumstances, which, well, there's always seems like there's unforeseen circumstances. So we're gonna take a short lunch break to refuel. You gotta be kidding, lunch is for wimps. Then we're gonna do the paneling on the walls. Next step, we're gonna put up that shiplap paneling on the walls. And the one thing we gotta figure out is how high we want that to go on the walls. And the height's basically gonna be determined by how it's gonna look in relation to the vanity and the mirror and outlets. Vanity we got is 31 inches tall. Another four or five inches for faucet. Okay, so we're gonna cut these, I think 40 inches high all the way around. So we got our laser level out and that's going to ensure that we have a straight edge all the way around. We just have to line this up and then shim the bottom. We glue it and it should be all good to go. A half, you know, a little more. Well, we got first casualty from rushing. I totally didn't see that tape measure was there. And we have one tape measure that is no more. So we made this discovery walking around Home Depot and check this out. This has a slot right here and you can see it slots. It's a perfect fit, like just perfectly, perfectly fits. Love it when you uh, think just to work out like that. Hey, 
Hello. Last piece of the paneling. I hope it fits, because I got the, uh, got all the construction adhesive on it already, so. Let's, uh, yes, yes, okay, oh yeah. I am gonna call that a win. So off camera, I think we're just gonna caulk all the seams, and then I'm gonna come back when we're ready to paint this, which hopefully will be about 45 minutes. All right, I know I said we were gonna take a little break uh, from filming and not show the caulking, but uh, actually, I'm gonna sneak up on cameraman Cam here. So guys, this is, uh, this is Cam. He's the one you've been seeing uh, for the last couple months, learning how to caulk, as well as operating the camera, helping out basically like an extension of me with everything. He's doing an awesome job. You guys have also been asking about Cat, and I will address that a little bit more in a Q&A and video coming up probably right after I finish the building. In short, she is focusing more on her art and YouTube channel. For now, we got me a cam holding down the fort over here. All right, y'all, it is 9.20, which means we have nine hours to go. I'm not gonna lie, doing the shiplap paneling just took way longer than expected. And if you step in here, we got this all taped off. Taping this stuff was a huge pain to get the little underhang there. But now we're finally almost ready for paint. So we gotta install a mirror. I've marked the studs. We're gonna drill the holes, install the mirror right here. And then over here, we're gonna drill the holes for two floating shelves that we haven't even made yet. Yeah, we're gonna make some floating shelves as soon as we get done painting. We're in a little trouble, but we're gonna do our best to finish it. Let's go. Feels like it grabbed a stud. Good. All right, guys, it is 1016, a little over eight hours to go. And you might say we are a little bit behind. We're about to start painting, finally. And before we paint the video, it's probably a good time to tell you about this video's amazing sponsor, Benjamin Moore. Many of you guys have a room that needs refreshing. Benjamin Moore has you covered with over 3,500 different colors mixed with Benjamin Moore's exclusive formulas. And those exclusive formulas mean no other paint brand can replicate the beautiful colors that Benjamin Moore has. And while 3,500 colors might seem a bit overwhelming, Benjamin Moore makes it easy to pick the exact right color for your space with their new digital color experience and using the digital color experience is easy. You just go to benjaminmore.com on your mobile device or desktop. And of course, it's not just about color selection. The quality of Benjamin Moore paint is second to none. It goes on super smooth. The coverage is amazing. This means you need less of Benjamin Moore's paint to cover the same amount of space. Less coats equals less time. And as we all know, time is money. And what about the long-term performance? Well, I painted all my bedrooms and the hallway upstairs with Benjamin Moore's Regal Select paint over a year ago. And I can personally attest that it is super durable. Those areas are high traffic and it has held up amazingly well. I highly recommend checking out Benjamin Moore's paint selection for yourself over at their website. There's a link in the description below. You can even order some paint samples there if you wanna see them in person. And of course, if you prefer the in-store experience, you can always head to your local Benjamin Moore store where I've found them to be extremely helpful. Thanks again to Benjamin Moore for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel and now, the clock is ticking on us and we gotta get back to painting before we run out of time on this 24 hour challenge. So for this bathroom, we're using Benjamin Moore's Aura Bath and Spa paint, which is formulated for high moisture environments and also comes in a matte finish, which is a rare combo to find bathroom paint that's also matte. And color wise for the bottom half, we are using the Black Panther. For the top, we're using Chantilly Lace, which is a variation of white. By the way, guys, I had some exciting news. It's almost midnight. That's not the exciting news. Exciting news is that Area at Work has just signed on to be a channel sponsor for me for the next two years. You guys know I love the clothes. I've been rocking them for the last two years. Need some workwear, want to support a brand that supports the channel, then head down to the link in the description. You can see the stuff that I like to wear. So first coat of paint is on and 
obviously I kind of expected this, but black on white, I'm gonna have to come back and do another coat. And it's now 11.45, so T minus six hours and 45 minutes to go. Only major thing we got left to do is build those floating shelves. Super tired right now, but kind of having fun. So what should you do when you're kind of tired? Probably play with some fire. No, seriously, we're gonna go play with some fire. We're gonna try to keep this quick and easy, but still really cool. We're gonna do some Shushugiban shelves. I just got some two by sixes here. I'm gonna cut a couple lengths of them and, uh, and we're gonna just set them on fire. And for those of you guys that don't know, Shushugiban is an old Japanese technique. You burn the wood, you char it, you get this really cool sort of blackened textured finish that looks awesome. And it also makes it super waterproof. Like they used to use it in Japan on uh, the outside of their houses. So. Let's cut down a couple boards and get going on that because it is now midnight. If you ever want to do this, there's so many different finishes and honestly, you just kind of experiment. Buy some wood, chop it up, try a bunch of different stuff. But what I found that I like, you're going to chart to where you see the embers start to glow on the surface. Right there, that's what you want. It's almost like you can see through the wood. There's lots of techniques for finishing this. I was just playing around the other day and discovered I kind of like the char on there without actually taking it off. You take the paste wax and it kind of melts in there. It just kind of works. Just rubbing the paste wax in over the char, dulls it down a little bit. And I think the paste wax just melts because it's still hot. As the wax will harden, it kind of hardens with the charcoal in it and it just gives you this cool finish. So the ends of these, they don't char as well. So what I did was make these a little bit longer than I want the actual shelves. Now that they're all finished, I'm just gonna cut them to length and then we'll have a nice clean cut. And it'll kind of be cool to have the exposed edges with a nice clean cut on the ends, contrasting with the black wrapping around. <laughs> Pretty darn good and straight. So now we're just gonna mix some epoxy to put in that hole in the wall so that it gets nice and rigid. We're trying something new because you might have heard of five minute epoxy, but now Total Boat has some four, four minutes. Four, uh, 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 uh. four minute epoxy. It smells like a, an epoxy. So we're just gonna take a bunch of this Lob it in there. All right. All right, time check, it is 2.12. Technically, we still have four hours and 18 minutes. I'm not gonna lie, I was hoping it wouldn't take the full 24 hours. We gotta put another coat of paint on, then it's just a matter of putting the vanity in, dropping the toilet in. Whew. All right, we're powering through. I think we, I think we can make it. It's only one way to find out. All right guys, it is 3.05 in the morning. I have already sent cameraman Cam home. It's just me. Just finished putting the second coat of paint on the walls here. Even though we're gonna have to take them out in order to take all the protective stuff off the floor later, I'm gonna just bring the toilet, put the toilet in, put the vanity in, so we can say, yeah, it's done. And I think that'll count. Let's do that. Ta-da! I'm personally just gonna say we did it because all we really gotta do is pull the tape away once that second coat of paint is dried. And of course, permanently attach the toilet and the vanity. We're gonna put the finishing touches, do the big reveal tomorrow, but 24 hour challenge. I'll let you decide. Is this count? Did I do it? I think I did, but hey, if you wanna hate, feel free because you know, you do you. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm gonna come back in the morning and we will reveal it. All right, we are back the next day. I pulled the vanity out of the bathroom and it's time to remove the painter's tape for the big reveal.
And we're almost to the cost, but I also want to come clean with you guys because this is a 24 hour challenge. I don't want to fake it. I want to be honest with all of you guys. Is there anything that we didn't do in the 24 hours? At the end of 24 hours, we had the floor done, we had the toilet in, we dropped the vanity in, paint was done. The next day, all I had to do was take off the painter's tape. I installed a toilet paper holder and a hand towel holder. All in all, it was about an hour of extra work the next day just to put those finishing touches on everything. I honestly didn't think we could do this. I thought it was gonna be a video about complete failure. I'd say that what we did counts as a complete bathroom renovation in 24 hours. What would I do differently? Well, the first most glaring thing is this cheapo mirror. Honestly, I can't stand this thing. The clips are kind of hideous. I'm probably gonna just go make a frame out of some leftover flooring to put around it in short order. So the second thing is the vanity sink combo. Honestly, you kind of get what you pay for. The materials are not great. It's held together with plastic and staples on the inside. The alignment of the drawers is not great and there's no way to adjust the drawer hardware. It's the kind of thing where I think it looks pretty good now, but in a year or two, it's probably not gonna look so great. So now I've answered basically all the questions I can think of you guys having, except for the big one of cost. So let's sit down and have a little, uh, little toilet side chat to talk about the cost. We'll start with the most expensive part. The vanity and sink combo was 350 bucks. The mirror is $27. And I definitely think we got what we paid for there. Cause as I said, my least favorite part of the bathroom currently. The toilet was 170 bucks. The paneling paint and trim combination was $351. The light over the vanity there was 60 bucks. And that by the way, was installed by the electrician a long time ago. As long as the rough electrical had been done, I don't think it would have been a big deal to install a simple light fixture in the 24 hour period though. We saved a bunch of money on these floating shelves because we just got one four by six board which was about eight bucks. A half inch dowel was about two bucks. So $10 in total for those shelves. The faucet, towel holder, and teepee holder were 110 bucks together. And my goal going in this was to try and do it for a thousand bucks. Knowing of course that fast and cheap don't really go together, but we just walked into the store and bought the stuff we wanted because that was part of the challenge. The grand total for all that was $1,018. So we were pretty darn close to that $1,000 goal. Now, if you wanna get technical, we also have to throw in the flooring. For me, it wasn't really a cost because this was just leftover flooring I had after I'd done the flooring in the rest of the building. If you wanna add it in though, the flooring was $6 a square foot. We've got about 25 square feet in here. Add another five square feet for waste. You're at about 180 bucks for 30 square feet of flooring in this bathroom. If you guys enjoyed this video and are just finding the channel or not subscribed, make sure you sub bell and check out the playlist of all the other videos in this abandoned building renovation series. We should cross our fingers be complete at the end of November. So you're gonna to wanna to get caught up on all those videos in that playlist right up there before we do the final reveal tour in a couple months. As always, I wanna say a huge thank you to all of you out there who are watching, following along with this journey. It means so much to me, letting me do something I love for a living. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is it for this time, and I will see you guys next time.